guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. It's time for the monthly Q&A, and that is when I put up a picture that says Q&A on my personal Instagram, at Federico Talks Watches, and you guys get to ask me questions. I do it monthly. Go follow me on Instagram if you want to participate. Of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. Today I'm wearing the trusty Seiko SKX. Love this bad boy. Never going to leave my collection, even if I own 10 turbions, which I don't know if I will, but if I do, I'd still wear the SKX every now and then. <laughs> and of course, please don't forget to check out Delray Watch Supply. Whole bunch of new watches in the hot deal section, heavily discounted. And tomorrow, not today, we are uploading uh, some very, very cool bang per buck pieces. Go check it out, delraywatch.com, link in the description below. So, let's get right into it. These are the questions. The first one is from Level 80 Toast. He says, you can only buy one watch for, one watch to daily for the rest of your life, and it has to be above $100,000. What do you get and why? That is an extremely hard question. $100,000 at retail what do I get and why? Oh man, I mean, I'd probably go with the Patek Philippe Enamel World Time, which trades for well above a hundred thousand. I love the World Time function. If I have a hundred thousand dollar watch, I'm assuming I'm retired and uh, traveling the world, which is what I would do uh, if I was retired. I don't know, man. I don't think it's the prettiest dial, but it's guaranteed to make a hefty profit for me down the line. The craftsmanship is ridiculously amazing, both in the movement and in the making of the dial, and the complication would be useful for uh, my newly found lifestyle. So yeah, Patek Philippe, enamel dial, world time. Alland.gnv says, Hey Fed, do you think Richard Meal is a new age Frank Mueller? Will the hype ever die down? Greetings from Geneva. Oh, Swiss, a Swiss viewer. Thanks so much, Alan. Um... Here's the thing, there's a little bit of a comparison, but no, I don't think Richard Mille will be the new Frank Mueller. And, and here's the thing, Richard Mille actually does make great watches. Uh, most of them are fantastic. You might not like the designs, that's fine. But Richard Mille never self-proclaimed himself to be the master of complication and charged 20 grand for an Etta chronograph. I mean, Frank Mueller is the laziest of the lazy. Uh, yeah, capable of making some great stuff, but 95% of their watches are two to $3,000 watches. Richard Mille, you may not like the designs, but there's true innovation there. Materials, movements, uh, they're made in very small batches. Yes, there is some similarities between uh, the Richard Mille hype and the Frank Mueller hype, but Frank Mueller was never truly backed by substance. Uh, Richard Mille was. And not to hate on Frank Mueller entirely, I just think their retail prices were ridiculous, and I think they were never really uh, all that uh, innovative. Alexander underscore Stabagas. Sorry if I butchered that. You speak highly of the Seiko SKX. I have read through the Seiko quality control issue, uh, issues, and it's a very expensive, inexpensive price point. What do you think? So basically, you're asking me if I think the SKX is actually a good watch. Here's the thing. I love my SKX. It's a fantastic watch to me. But that's due to intangibles. It's due to personality. It's due to how it makes me feel. Do I actually think it's a good watch? Not really. In fact, I actually think it's a pretty bad watch. And for all those guys about to go crazy in the comment section, I'm going to make a dedicated video about this. I still wear it. I still love it. But even at its cheap price point, not a very good watch. Watch underscore journey one. Hey, Fed, I'm considering purchasing a Weiss watch. Do you have an opinion on the company? Yes. Uh, so let me start off by saying I've never held a Weiss watch in my hand, I'm not sure how well made or not well made they are. I can tell you though, I hate their marketing. 
that whole bullshit made in America thing, which isn't really made in America because they machined a few 6497 parts. In my book, that is boycottable and a boycottable offense. What do I think? I say spend your money elsewhere. However, can't really give you a true opinion on the watch. I've never held one. Way of the Watch says, I don't hear a lot from your videos about vintage watches, especially obscure like the Omega Pilot series, uh, the Seamasters, and the Flight Masters. What is your take on the vintage watch market and the risk of buying online? I don't talk about it a lot because I'm genuinely not an expert in it. I have interest in it, but it's not where my expertise lies. What are the risks of buying it online? The risks are massive. Um, you have to buy vintage from a trusted source. Either that or you have to do a lot, a lot, a lot of research because much more often than not, something's wrong with the watch. Be it something's been replaced or it's not functioning properly. This is not a market I would dip your toes into without either having a trusted source or doing a lot of research. Lobster Bag says, Please convince me I don't need a speedy. Mr. Lobster, we're friends on Facebook, I'll tell you this. Everybody needs a Speedy. I love my Speedy. A manual wine chronograph with that history? How could you not have one? In fact, stop watching my video and go buy one right now. I have three in stock. <laughs> no, but seriously, great watch. Uh, Damien Ross. Hey, Fed, love your channel. Keep up the great work. Thank you, buddy. Do you view yourself more as a cool and calculated watch pur purchaser or someone that falls in love and buys on emotion? Well, Damien, I'm not cool and collected in any part of my life. I have a genuinely bad temper. I make uh, rash decisions, and that affects my watch buying. I'm not cool and calculated about anything, and I've never bought any watch cool and calculated. I think every single watch I've ever purchased, I've thought about for about 25 minutes, and then I've pulled the trigger. I've never planned out a watch purchase. Is that a good way to buy watches? I'm not sure. Probably not, but it is the way I do it. Anna Lefty, can you please recommend some place to sell watches, looking to trade in and sell? Any advice would be he helpful. Well, Anna, a a Anna, I think it's Anna. Anna, DelrayWatch.com. We do both. Shameless plug. Oli Erickson says, hey, Fed, what do you think of factory set diamonds on a watch? Well, I think most of them are not great, but some watches, like the Rolex Patriot, can really be works of art. I think it really comes down to it. If it's just a bezel or an hour marker, I say skip it. But if it's truly a piece of craftsmanship, then it can be quite beautiful. And then the last one is from Ricky Maz. What do you think about Eberhardt? Here in Italy, it's a pretty big name, but it's pretty much ignored on YouTube. Well, Ricky, Eberhardt made some great vintage chronographs. And Italy is probably the biggest market in the world for vintage watches. They love their vintage. However, the Eberhard of today is not the same as the Eberhard of yesteryear. Just standard at a movements in overpriced cases with a questionable history today. I don't think they really have much connection to the Eberhard of yesteryear. Just another brand selling at 75% off. That's why it's pretty much ignored on YouTube. Anyway, guys, thank you for sticking around for another Q&A. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. That's at Federico Talks Watches. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really does help. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.